Here we are, back at Sandhurst once again. This time it's late February, 26th of February today. And uh, it's been a pretty grim winter, to be honest with you. The lake's frozen up for considerable lengths of time. But um, we've had the op opportunity, like a couple of weeks ago, coming here probably two days after it defrosted and um, cast the mag bags quite close in, off to the right there in a, like a deep channel. Uh, and two in the morning had a nice 24 pounder, 24 pound mirror. So now it's two weeks later, I was fishing them in the same area of water the night before last and um, didn't catch anything. Had three mag bags out there with crumbled boiling, nothing, no liners. And yesterday, um, a fair few fish were jumping straight out in front of the swim there. Probably about 80 yards range in the deep hole that's out there. Um, so I put all three over to bottom bait tooty fruities, wanged them out there, and sure enough, just on light, had a lovely 28 pound common. Just pulled up tight, out the clip, pulled into him, nice scrap across the swim, got him down there in the net. So uh, we'll let you have a look at him in a second. Lovely fish. There he is. Got him on a 2E. And a carp alive that. And a carp alive that don't eat a toot. And this one's no exception. Lovely fish. Had him on the size 8 grabber. And a bit of shrink tubing. Nice bit of the old jelly wire rook link in the 25. Caught about 80 yards range, this one. In a deep, uh, silty area out there in amongst the shallow areas. So well chuffed for that one. 26th of February, cold water common. Lovely. Right, I'm going to give you a quick run through on the terminal tackle arrangement that I used to catch that fish. So, starting from the bottom here, you've got a two and a half ounce distance uh, bag bomb from Atomic. A little chopped down hoodie there to protect the knot. A size 8 swivel. And then above it, you've got a 6mm rubber shock bead from Atomic. And basically, that's uh, a nice, safe way of doing your helicopter setup, essentially, uh, in case of a crack off or a break or anything like that. Basically, that bead can come up your lead core and over your needle knot. Basically, I've attached the lead core to the lead with a three-turn Gwinner knot, nice and simple. And at this end, I use a three-turn needle knot. Nice and simple, nice and effective. I'm going to show you the, uh, the hook link arrangement that I use with this, so check it out. OK, what you're going to need for this is some 25-pound atomic jelly wire. Then you're going to need the rock bottom rig tubing, it's PVC rig tubing that basically fits over your uh, over the bend of the hook to trap the hair and essentially unlike silicon tubing it doesn't move on the cast so that's good stuff you're going to need some of that just a, a couple of mils something like this my old favourite size 8 grabbers blinding hook and then lastly you're going to need a little bit of uh, shrink tubing and essentially you just cut like a little section of that, probably just under an inch, three quarters of an inch, something like that. That goes over the eye of the hook after you've tied the rig and basically you dip it in boiling water to crank the hook over. And essentially with a bottom bait rig, that's what you want. You want everything to be forced downwards. So with this rig it does, and essentially it will always catch somewhere on the bottom, bottom of the mouth. That one that you see me catch, that was hooked just on the left-hand side, probably an inch in, so it's well confidently taken. So I'll just show you how I tie it. Do you tie your uh, your hook on in a no-knot style? So usually I use seven turns. Essentially, you strip down a good length of the uh, of the 25-pound jelly wire. Essentially, determine where you want the hook to be, and you go round one two, three, four, five, six, 
seven. Lovely. So I've got a nice little, just under an inch section of the strip braid still left there, which is good. Cut it. You pass the tag end through the eye. That creates your normal no nut setup. So there we go. You've got to test it. Make sure that it's good and strong. Ain't going to part on you. There we go. Bed the knot down quite nicely. Get the hair into position. That's all straight with the shank. And essentially what we do is get the little bit of shrink tubing. Snip off a little section of that. As I said before, probably three quarter of an inch. Not too much. You don't want too much on there. Then you put that over the tag end. Bring it down to the eye of the hook, like so. Essentially what we're going to do with that is cover the knot. And then we'll dip it in a minute, make it shrink, and basically crank it over like that. So that creates the flip over effect for, of the rig. Then what you do, get a little section of the rock bottom rig sleeve in. Probably two mil, something like that. Cut yourself off for like a little section of that. And what you've got to do is pass that Essentially, it won't go over the eye or any of that, so you've got to do it in reverse. Right, pass it over the hair, then get the point of the hook and pass that inside the tubing, like so. Always beware, don't nick the point of the hook, because you'll, uh, you'll end up blunting in it. Sometimes I do wish I had nails. And that's what we're after before we actually uh, shrink the tube and crank it over. You can see that the hair's trapped there by the little bit of PVC tubing and the shrink tubing is just about pushed over the eye. Essentially what we're going to do is crank the tubing over like that. There we go. That water's bubbling. What we do is just dip the old shrink tubing in there. That'll shrink down nicely. Well there it is, the finished article. Got a nice little tooty fruity bottom bait on there. So as you can see, you've got a nice gap between the top of the bait and the bend of the hook. So that allows the play in the fish's mouth. You've got your little bit of uh, tubing holding it on there and you've got your cranked over bit of tubing with a little bit of the uh, jelly wire stripped down to allow play again in the mouth and also on the bottom and then leave the rest on, like that section there. I'd fish that probably about <coughs> six to eight inches. That common that I just had was probably one about that long, probably about seven, eight inches, something like that. So I'll just show you what it looks like attached to the uh, terminal setup. So there it is, the finished article, nice and safe and nice and simple. And that's what caught me the fish. As I say, I like to keep things nice and simple, especially on waters like this, on Sandhurst. Um, there's no point over complicating the, uh, any matters. This is what I use like, for a lot of my fishing. As I said, I was using maggots over here, but the fish seem to have moved away, like they've moved further up the lake. Like. So essentially, I can't get the old mag bags that far out, so I thought, well, I'll switch back to the old favourite, you know, the single tutti fruities. Sure enough, put three tutti fruities out across the area, and had one this morning, so well happy with that.